That is so true, isn't it? The more we know, the... It, uh, Bill mentioned, Senator Heffern mentioned uh, Shenhua, this outfit owned by the Chinese government, and they just picked off 43 farmers in Gunnada, prime agricultural land, and unapologetically say they're going for more. And of course, when you're talking about open-cut coal mining, you just have to go to the Hutter Valley. I mean, it's like a crater of the moon. Now, this was all, these rights were granted under the RAND government. And they came in and there was a condition of the development that they would have to rehabilitate the land. They haven't and you can't. The, the document that um, Senator Heaven referred to, and this will tell you how willful and brazen these governments are because they're broke, that was a document written by the Principal Policy Officer of Mining and Resource Strategy within the Queensland Department of Mines and Energy, a senior bureaucrat advising the Beatty and Bly government. She was Treasurer, he was Premier. I should point out the deal done in the Northern Territory wasn't done with Drew, I have to tell you. He wouldn't have done such a deal with Peter Beatty. But this was written by a senior advisor. They completely ignored it. Part of the problem he outlined to the government, and he said, identifying one of the problems, and that was, he said, the water management regime has been established, he said, advising the government, and it's built on four principles, all of which he said ought not to be endorsed. But he said it's built on four principles. One, gas producers are entitled to take the associated water as of right. No cost, as much as you like. The government was advised of this. Secondly, the companies accept an obligation to monitor the consequences of this. He said, this is not happening. He said, the companies have an obligation to make good any loss sub, uh, suffered by established users. He advised the, like, the Beatty government, this is not happening. He said environmental authorities are required for these activities and these may be conditioned. He then went on in, to outline what the problems were and just to give you some idea, this is how willful these people are. This was completely ignored and the bloke has subsequently left the department. He couldn't in all conscience stomach what they were allowing in Queensland. And he said a term, sorry, he said, the perception is that there's a genuine concern by the community about the extraction of water by the coal seam gas industry in the Western Darling Downs. It passed a quick cabbie test. On the 6th of December, two out of two cabbies interrogated in Toowoomba left this author in no doubt about the depth of their feeling and their knowledge. A term used, quote, plundering our resources, he said, conveys the flavour of their values. How valid are views of this kind? Can they be readily assuaged? He said, landholders in the community are primarily concerned about the effects of this industry on one, groundwater resources, especially existing bores, two, farming operations, especially cropping paddocks requiring long machinery runs, three, the contamination of the surface through saline water and large permanent evaporation ponds, four, the waste of a precious resource, namely farming, and deliberately evaporating water. He then said this, however, these do not exhaust the sum of the concerns of the state departments who are charged with protecting the undivided public interest. And the undivided public interest was ignored for the sake of a quid. And that man, as I said, has now left the employ. I know you're too far away to see, and I wish that there were some screens here, but I've got a map here, which is the map of New South Wales, and you'll see the colours on it. That is from the government's own department. Two thirds of New South Wales, the subject of a licence of some sort. You can see all the colouring on it. Two thirds of New South Wales. Now, there is no audit. There is not a person in this gathering today who can say without fear of contradiction that there is no licence to mine underneath my home. You can't get the information. It doesn't exist. You just find out when they start knocking on your door and charging in and saying, we have a right. And we're talking about water. Let me just repeat before we hear from... I, I, uh, this James Balderson, the boss of Santos, wrote to me um, in the middle of the night on Thursday night, it was, and he said this to me, this is the kind of world we're in, quote, all town mayors of Narrabri, Tamworth and Gunnedah 
I would have inserted wet behind the ears, rejected the call from moratorium, which Jeremy Buckingham will talk about in a moment. This is on coal seam gas. As they know, we need to do the exploration work necessary to provide the science to establish whether we can operate safely and sustainably in these regions. Chance you got when you've got people like that allegedly representing the people. Because what we do know is that they have conceded that the coal seam gas industry will use, extract 300 gigalitres of water from the Murray, Darling and Great Artesian Basins. That's a year. 150,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. They will not tell us what chemicals are used, and they identify a couple, but some say there could be 250 chemicals used in the fracking process. They won't tell us whether they're carcinogenic, whether they're likely to be cancer producing. They won't tell us whether those volumes of water will de-aquifer, and as Bill has made reference to that, dry up the aquifers. They don't tell us the damage that we've done to prime agricultural land with the mobilisation of salt, no one has presented a case how this, how this land can be rehabilitated after 30 years of coal seam gas. And I saw last Sunday, I was in the gym. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Here was the CEO of AGL, I hope he's here, and I hope he's listening to what I'm saying. Mr Fraser, you are on national television telling out and out lies. Full stop. But they'll stop at nothing, these people. This bloke said on television, national television, that if this movement goes on, New South Wales is going to run out of gas. Now, when people hear that, they think, well, you know, those, all those stupid damn protesters go away. Run out of gas. New South Wales uses 4% of coal seam gas. 4% of coal seam gas. In its own inquiry submission to the Upper House Inquiry in New South Wales, in its own inquiry, own submission, the New South Wales government and... and uh, Prue, I have problems about who the authors of that were, but that's another story. Acknowledged that the current use of coal seam gas in New South Wales is 160 petajoules. And they said, at the worst scenario, that will increase to 550 petajoules some way out there in the future. Well, I have seen the submission that Santos made to the Stock Exchange. Why would Santos make a submission to the Stock Exchange? simply to raise money, to encourage you to buy shares and to say to those people who are reading the prospectus, well, listen, this is the asset that's underpinning your shares. And they provided maps to the stock exchange. And those maps demonstrated that Gunnedah region, the Liverpool Plains alone, their figures, I'm not making this up, in the document of the stock exchange, that the resources of the Liverpool Plains around Gunnedah in coal seam gas their words were in excess of 12,000 petajoules. This bloke's on the television telling us we run out of gas. We use 160 a year. Can you divide 160 to 12,000? And that's just the Liverpool Plains. But more than that, Santos presented a map to the Stock Exchange to highlight to the investor the tremendous breadth and diversity of this asset. And you're going to buy some shares in it. And there were the towns, all marked. Gundawindi, Dubbo, Moree, Walcott, Narrabri, Gunnedah, Tamworth, Corindai, Scone, Coonabarabin, Canamble, Galgon. The best agricultural land in the world. It was all there. Named by Santos. Now, corporate law requires people to tell the truth in submissions before the stock exchange. If that's not the truth, then they're in trouble. Of course it's the truth. And this is on prime agricultural land. This is the centre of our food security. This is the capacity that we have to feed the world. And this is where farmers' interests lie, and we're here today to protect those interests, and we will win. Make no mistake about it. The New South Wales Greens, the New South Wales Greens, yeah, we'll win, don't worry about that. Any representatives of the mining companies here? Anyone from Santos here? No. Anyone from AGL? Here's Mr Fraser here, the CEO of AGL. Why would you go on national television telling untruths? Well, Jeremy Buckingham is going to put the cat among the pigeons. This is not, there's no politics here. We, we don't care who supports the cause. We're just interested in the support. And they're going to introduce a bill 
into the New South Wales Parliament to impose a moratorium on all coal seam gas exploration and mining until scientific studies into the effects of coal seam gas mining are carried out. And those, those studies have to be objective. Objective. Now, of course, all these companies submit environmental impact statements. They're written by these companies. It's just a licence to go ahead.